There is a long running debate in cycling about which handlebars are stronger, carbon or aluminium. Well, thanks to the experts at Control Tech, we're going to settle this once and for all. We're going to look at two different types of strength. Strength over time, so resistance to fatigue, and then also impact strength. And to investigate, Control Tech have very kindly given us access to their testing facility at their headquarters, which lies just behind this yellow door. First up, we've got fatigue testing. So how long a handlebar can stand up to extreme normal use? There is an international standard that all handlebars that are sold on the market need to withstand. It's called ISO 4210, since you asked. And it means that every handlebar has to go through 200,000 cycles. So 100,000 cycles of having a 280 Newton force pressing down on it, immediately followed by another 100,000 cycles of a 400 Newton force pushing and pulling on the handlebar, like we can see here. Now, Control Tech, actually, like many people in the industry, feel that the ISO standard doesn't quite go far enough so they require all their handlebars to go through 400,000 cycles and with greater force as well. That's still not enough to break the bars. So what would happen if we left the machines running? We've turned the machines off. Control Tech have pointed out that as an experiment, it's not a terribly good one because actually from their previous research, it would take between 600,000 and 800,000 cycles for a carbon bar to break. That's three days non-stop. With an aluminium bar though, it's between 450,000 and 500,000 cycles. So significantly less in fatigue testing a carbon handlebar will last longer. However, what happens in a crash? Right then, this is where the debate really hots up. This is the reason why a number of pro cyclists still use aluminium handlebars as opposed to carbon handlebars, even though there's a 100 gram or so weight penalty. Because some people think that an aluminium bar is more resistant to impact. So those kind of cataclysmic events like riding down a hill at 65 kilometers an hour and hitting an almighty pothole. They think that an aluminium bar is even less likely to fail than a carbon one. But will it? We're gonna find out with this torture machine of choice. It's called a drop tester. And basically, we mount a 5.8 kilo weight. <coughs> that's, that's more than 5.8 kilos, I swear. We're going to mount one on either side of the handlebars and then drop them. Firstly, from 36 centimeters. Then, if they survive, from 48 centimeters. Doing my maths. Then, 60, 72, and so on. Which one is going to fail first, carbon or aluminium? I thought it had passed 60 centimetres, but when you look closely, we got a bit of crackage going on. Unbelievably though, you could have ridden that one out. Like, I thought that that would be a catastrophic failure. If a carbon bar goes, in my head, it's gonna go. But look, that's still like, that's pretty good. You could hold on to that. But there we go, one on that side, and a matching one on that side, all the way underneath. That was a big impact though, wasn't it? Ooh. Well, there we go then. The aluminium handlebar has withstood 84 centimetres. And to be honest with you, we're going to give it a reprieve now. We're not going to take it any further because that is an almighty impact. But let's put this into context as well. The carbon handlebar going at 60 centimetres, that too is the kind of impact that you would never, ever normally encounter on the road. So both, we've got to stress, are 
plenty safe enough to road riding, but for ultimate impact resistance, the aluminium handlebar is clearly the winner. It's complex, but in essence, all materials have a fatigue life, whereby when they're subjected to repeated stresses that are less than would cause failure on a single application, what's called the yield strength, the material would still fail after a certain number of cycles. The stress will eventually cause tiny cracks to form defects or stress concentrations like bolt holes or sharp corners. These cracks can then grow with continued use, which can ultimately result in the component breaking. Now, because of the way that aluminium behaves and hardens as it deforms, cracks form and grow in it faster and at comparatively lower forces. Carbon fibre, however, is more resistant to fatigue because it's much more difficult for a crack to form and grow through the complex microstructure of fibres and resin. Our test handlebars come out of Controltech's pretty extensive range of both aluminium and carbon fibre handlebars. The brand actually started out in the late 80s and early 90s making bar ends for mountain bikes. That's right, the brand very much off made now, and they still make bar ends to this day, if you were wondering. Now, since those earliest days, the brand has actually moved manufacture from the US over to Taiwan, as has much of the cutting edge research and also engineering. On the one hand, comparing the two materials is quite difficult. Control Tech point out that you could create a handlebar that lasts almost to infinity on these tests out of either material. But what you wouldn't get out of that handlebar is one that was comfortable or particularly lightweight. You wouldn't want to put it anywhere near a road bike, let's put it that way, because the true engineering skill comes in making a bar that's super strong, super tough, but also lightweight. I mean, this aluminium one is just 225 grams. This carbon one is 169 grams. So we have an answer. The carbon handlebar is stronger, most of the time. Sometimes, however, the aluminium handlebar is stronger. I do think it's interesting that carbon has clearly a greater resistance to fatigue, whereas aluminium clearly has greater resistance to impact. Now, the question is, I suppose, what you do with this information. So this is kind of how I've processed it. You shouldn't look at a handlebar in isolation. It's one component of many that makes up your bike. Therefore, I think you need to buy what's appropriate to the rest of your bike. If you've got a super lightweight carbon fiber road bike, then it makes sense to put a nice lightweight carbon handlebar on there as well. It's in keeping with the bike. You also get that greater vibration damping as well. If, however, you're building up a really burly, heavy duty cyclocross bike, then it makes sense to stick an aluminium handlebar on there as well. And with the same breath, actually, you also shouldn't expect to be able to build up a featherweight five kilo climbing bike, stick an aluminium handlebar on there, and then have something that's utterly bomb proof because something else will be the point of failure, almost inevitably. And then the other thing to mention as well is that there actually isn't any question over the safety of either of these products. The tests that we've been running today are extreme, really extreme. And so there is no weight limit on this carbon handlebar either. It is perfectly, perfectly suited to riding conditions. It's just that when GCN gets let loose in the lab, we want to break things. So there it is. Right, do make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you to Control Tech for their time, the use of their lab, and also for handlebars, which aren't very much good for anything now. Do also subscribe to GCN. To do that, just click on the globe. And if you want to watch a couple more videos, we've got an old one actually about which handlebars pros use. And then for one about handlebar shape, which is pretty interesting, click just down there.